tonight on The Renault Show. Jen from Interiors Addict is sharing this year's top living room trends with us. Expert landscaper Aaron Simpson is showing us how you can repair the retaining walls in your garden. Our resident chippy Rowan is here to help us avoid stepping on exposed nails in our timber decks. Whilst naturopath Temi Guest is back to keep us fit and well whilst renovating. I've got your three must-haves for every room in your renovation and Mark finally answers the big question. Does a swimming pool really add value to your property? Welcome to The Renault Show. now to discuss what's hot and what is not in your living spaces is none other than Jen Bishop from Interiors Addict. Welcome Jen. Hi Naomi. Are you uh, ready to divulge all of what's hot and what is sure. not for 2018 in living spaces? I am, yes. Okay, hit me with it. What's the top trend? Well, um, I think everyone always wants to know about colours. Everyone wants to know about colours. And we have seen a lot of pale pink and grey. Is it here to stay? Of late. Um, of it, late for like a whole 18 months I think at it least. probably is here to stay for some people because it's just ridiculous. It's, it's ridiculously popular. It's very easy to live with yes. and, you know, there's and nothing wrong with it. And it does look great. It's just that we see it and perhaps in our professions we see it a lot more yeah. than everyone else. So to us it's like, oh, not more, but, you know, it's still beautiful. Um, so how it's here to stay? To an extent. However, what's coming in and, you know, it can take a while... Um, Apparently, according to the trend forecasters and yes. Milan and all the places we look for the latest trends, um, warmer colours are coming in. Earthy colours. Not orange. I'm surprised too. Actually, yes, terracotta. Okay. I know. But it can look beautiful and there's been a lot of... Um, in the right spot with yeah, the right amount. You don't have to have the whole room or the couch. Imagine that a terracotta room. Rusty colours, terracotta, yeah. mustard, that kind of colour. Believe yeah. it or not, that's what's pipped to be the next kind of There's some beautiful mustards around they with really navies. Are. Like, yeah, well, you know, I'm a yeah. big fan. Big, big fan of yeah. navy. But some of the gorgeous mustard colours, which for me, I can pacify my way through that with like the beautiful colours in timber. Like yeah. you look at the beautiful oak timber, there, there's rusty you know, mustard elements in yeah. that. And so I think it's a way of bringing that warmth to our space that a natural yeah. timber provides. And I think that's probably the biggest thing is that the trend is a move towards warm colours rather than the cooler greys. Rather than the white, the blacks and, and the bluey, yeah. bluey greys. Yes, yeah. Nice. So, so we'll twist. see. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. We might be sitting here in six months. Yeah. Going, you have take... a terracotta bedroom. Never. <laughs> <laughs> never but you know you just it, you never know it could take two years to come through it may not come at all but that's trends and you know yes and you know what's really interesting um, and I think it's important for everyone at home to think about is when you know you've mentioned that there's a big shift in color and that warm earthy tones and you know the rust and the mustards that doesn't mean that you're all of a sudden going to see every mainstream place only having rust and orange lounges no, like it's about just in the the accessories and the tertiary elements and the dashes yeah. and in the availability of product in that color you're going to start to see that sort yeah. of influence and really they are the places where you can play with those new trends without having to invest in a new couch and new rug you know you can add a few cushions you can have a vase you can and see how you feel about it exactly see yeah. if it works for you yeah low oh. commitment oh, i like it low commitment to trend yeah. you should hashtag that yeah. i'm low i have low <laughs> commitment to trend all right what else are you seeing um i think a slightly more eclectic look Okay, um, so a less curated? Yeah, less formal perhaps. Yeah. A bit of um, mixing in things like timber and like rattan. It's just still yeah. huge. Um, and apparently um, other colours that will be coming in will be... Um, and they've been in before, you know, um, are things like the navy and emerald and velvet yep. velvet's still big velvet's been around all for year a round while. it's not just a winter thing you know a velvet's still here and do you think that well we could speculate all day about why i think why yeah. we might think it is 
but there's something amazing and warm and textural about velvet and tactile yes and it's just a bit luxe it is yeah. isn't it it is yeah. and it's comforting it is yeah and, really and talking comforting. of comforting um, apparently, was that a great segue? And I didn't it was, even realize. I know. Oh yeah. I love it when that happens. But apparently, <laughs> one of the other things is um, in sofas, which are a big yeah, purchase. A huge. Um, sofas are all about comfort again, and curves, and big and sort of feathered cushion. Yeah, you know what I mean. Real cozy, comfy. The fat. ones that you can dive back yeah. into and not hit your head on a hard frame. Yeah, because I think there has been a bit of a, you know, sofas did become quite sort of sculptural and, and square lean. and yes, lean. They're very lean, lean weren't they? Which looks beautiful, but it's not. Um, you don't kind of cozy up though, that's do you? It. You don't sort of go, I'm going to get my hot chocolate and marshmallows. So cozy and warm, back in. I like it. Mm. Is there any more that you want to leave us with for your living spaces? Um, I think the only other thing is, uh, I think we'll continue to see drapes being popular. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, long shears, linens, you know, really long ceiling to floor drapes. So you're telling me that vertical blinds are not going to be seeing a comeback Funnily anytime enough, soon? No. No. Well, I'm comforted by that fact. I don't know about any of you. I'm very comforted by the fact that our trends aren't heading back to vertical drapes and that yeah. we, are, we are embracing. And, and I think the overtone for that entire conversation is that we're starting to go from what was the lean and, and slightly sculpted looks yep. in, and the cooler kind of feel. Yeah, into the scandy, I guess. Yeah, into the warmers, the textures, the velvets are still there, yeah. the really richer, beautiful colours, earthy colours, mm. and then we're layering it all up with curtains. Yeah. That's just amazing. Sounds good to me. It does, hey, <laughs> we should sort that out. Yeah. All right, thanks for joining us today. Thank you. All right, see you next time. Hey team, it's Naomi here with Aaron Simpson from Green Envy. You can look him up on Facebook and he is here to talk to us about all things landscaping, gardening, you name it. And we've got a big one at my client's property here today. We have da -da -da, a big crack in the retainer wall. So I dread to ask what's actually going on here, Aaron. Not going to be a good answer, sorry, Naomi. Oh no! Okay, so what, why does this stuff happen? Like, this is cracked through a block, right? Yes. What's the go? Um, we've obviously got some movement in the ground here, so it, it could have come from movement in the ground, um, whether this wall's been built correctly from the start or not, it's another yep. thing. Um, very hard to do to tell without starting to excavate or pull the thing down. Like, without pulling out all these plants, all these Correct. beautiful hedges. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Um, so, look, if it was just a superficial crack, we'd see a crack in a joint. We've actually gone right through a block here. So to go right through a block, we know that it's going to be a structural sort of damage. Yep. Um, that can come from the amount of weight behind the wall. These style blocks are sealed from behind, and when they're okay. sealed from behind, they hold water. Like a fish pond. You got it. So, you know, once <laughs> you get pond. the weight of that soil, you get the weight of that water behind it, that adds the weight of the, the, the wall, yep. um, puts pressure on the wall, and it finds a weaker spot. Okay, so that's, weaker spot here. it's definitely structural. Yes. So the first protocol for the client is to contact an engineer. Would be my recommendation, yes. And um, this isn't going to be an easy fix. This isn't going to be no. a bog it up, celastic it up, gap it up, no. sick flex it up and paint it over. Unfortunately, it's not. Okay, no. so I think the big tip here, guys, if you've ever got cracks in your brickwork or in any of your retaining walls, always check where the crack runs, right? Correct. And so if it runs through the normal joints or through the grout or yep. the mortise joints, that's fine, but if it starts to run through blocks, yep. that's when we call an engineer. We're through a block, but we've also got opening in it. So we can okay. see it start to open up. And it's getting it better up, and better. Yeah, it, it, that's showing it's more structural than it is anything else. I would suggest there may have been some steel or something that may not have gone in yep. laterally in this wall, and that's that will be what will cause it. So, unfortunately, it's not a good answer. It's a phone call to the engineers for us. Yeah. Okay, so as an Aussie, Rowan, yes. we love our decks. We do love a deck. Oh my gosh, we love a deck. And everyone thinks they can build a deck, which a lot of people could. Yep, yep. It's it's a big Meccano set, but yeah, it's 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 <laughs> nice eminently, description. It's eminently achievable. But that for Meccano anyone. set needs fixings. It does. Okay. That's how you hold it together. That's otherwise, right. uh, yeah, otherwise it's just Tumbling, uh, otherwise it's Jenga. It's Jenga. <laughs> it's not Meccano. And you don't want a Jenga deck. No, but one thing that strikes me whenever I go to whenever I go to different houses 
and um, different renovation sites and I'm looking at their decks and I'm looking at the decking boards specifically. So just the decking boards. Yep. I'm noticing that there are so many different ways to fix the decking boards to your joists underneath. So there, I then thought, well, you know what? Let's look into this. Let's have a talk let's about it. Like, let's pull this apart. So we have our standard old fashioned nails yes. that have no grip lock on the middle. Yes. Okay, so I'm noticing no one is using them at all to build, put their decking boards on anymore. No. And that is because? Because decks are generally uh, timber, so they are uh, natural fiber. They expand and contract with the weather. And then if you've got a plain shank nail and your timber- So no groove on it. No groove on it. Okay, So Just for the record. Yeah, sorry, yes. <laughs> uh, and the timber, so the nail's fixed through the timber and then the timber expands, it'll lift that nail out and then as the timber shrinks, the nail will stay proud. Oh, and that's when you're running along your deck and you catch between your toes. Yes! On the nail head oh, that's sticking up. I hate that. And then if one of your kids do it, they run through the house yep. on the carpet with yep. blood. Or you're forever out there just tapping Popping down. Those yeah, nails with the, with your, your punch and you're just countersinking them, but you can do it till the cows come over. Just and they'll keep, keep, still keep, keep coming up. Going on. And obviously much more on exposed areas. Absolutely, okay. yeah. But but any timber deck outside will expand and contract just with any Just the way it is. Yeah, right. So then the next step would be to use one of the grip locks. That's right. So this these have got a, a like a twisted shank. So as you drive this in, it will actually turn as well. So almost like a screw, but in a It's kind of like a hybrid. Yeah, kind of like a hybrid. These ones are galvanised as well, so um, there's a little bit more protection there than uh, a normal steel fixing. Um, and they will sit a little proud anyway. You can, I don't know, you probably can't see the head on them there through the packet, but they're, they're not um, they're not flush. They're not countersunk. You'd have to yeah, you'd have to go around and punch those as well, because ideally you want your fixings to finish at least at floor level or just slightly lower. Okay. Um, just to try and avoid some of that expansion and construction and, and things popping out. So, but again, like my deck at home has got these in it. And uh, yeah, over time they'll still. Do you know what? Up. We were just talking about this. My deck at home is 11 years old mm -hmm. and it has these in it. Cause when it was built, these were like the new amazing yeah, that's thing. Right. They were, yeah. They're never going to pop out like normal nails. Everything's going to be fine. And every second weekend I get out there with my hammer just on the mainly exposed area. So they have done a good job. However, time is the great equaliser. It is. So then I guess the next step is a full on screw. Yep, that's right. So, so would that mean though, if I use screws in my decking boards, I'd need to pre-drill every single hole? No, you don't need to pre-drill every single hole. Normally it's just the cut ends, so the joints. So wherever your fixing is going to be, if you're, if you're butt joining uh, two decking boards together over a joist, so your joist is running this way yes. and you're butt joining them so together. So you're screwing really close to the edge, so that means. So really close to the edge of the cut end of the timber. Um, what you'll tend to find is if you don't pre-drill a hole, then you'll split that timber. Because this okay. particular screw here, I don't know if you can see that, will just self-cut its own thread. So it will just, as it goes into the timber, it'll just push. So it's not apart. cutting area for its shaft no, or its shank? No, it's not cutting only a hole. For its it's thread. just yeah, cutting its own thread in there and that will split your timber. So Okay, yeah. what about if it is hardwood timber for your deck, which I know you love being a chippy. Yeah, um, so if it was a hardwood decking board, mm -hmm. then would you still be able to get away with in the lengths, not on the ends, not pre-drilling? You could, but I would always, always, always pre-drill. Okay. That's what I would do, because there's nothing worse than, um, you know, getting three quarters of the way through one and then splitting. So, yep. yeah, I, I mean, it's, it's much, decks are always very time consuming when it comes to putting your decking boards on because- Correct. Um, your frame can go up super quick, That's hey? right, and because and to a large extent, your frame's not seen, so it can be a little rougher. And the timber that you use as well is generally not finished timber anyway, so it's rough, it's rough sawn timber. So um, it's not designed to be seen, it's just designed to be structurally sound. Whereas yep. the top surface of your deck, that's what you always look at. Um, so you want to take your time putting that putting that on, definitely. It's like so. putting on the final coat. It is, yeah, it is. And so many good jobs can be undone by messing up that final coat. It's know? like when so. someone goes, oh, the holes I dug for these footings for this deck, they're massive and they're amazing. And then you 
No one really cares. No one sees. It's no like it's like it. putting a slab down, and the amount of work that goes into a slab, and it's then you just huge. bury it all in concrete. And I'm like, oh no, there was so much in that. But anyway. Okay. Now I want to take this one step further because this excites me because it's a shortcut. Now I haven't used these myself. These are self-drilling decking screws. Mm. So that, just going off what you were saying then, I don't know, I'll give them to Rowan, see yeah. if you can show. I've They've actually got like a, a drill bit on the end of the screw. Yeah, I don't know if your camera's picking it up there. You can see just here, they've got a self-tapping or self-cutting uh, mm. head on the start of them. So that's the first bit that's gonna cut through. And that will be, you'll find that'll be the same dimension is the shank, not the thread, but the shank. So uh, that will pre-drill your hole, in theory. I haven't used these either um, before. We probably need to different. test these puppies out. I wouldn't mind actually doing that with one of these. Because it'd be really great to see, because that technically could halve That can save you time. a great deal of time as well, yeah. And let's these, test that out. We will, let's And get that. back to everyone yeah. on how well that goes. Yeah, let's get the toys you got a, out. You got a deck to do at your house? I do actually. There you go. There you, go. you can test those puppies out I and do. get back to us. I do. Well, I'll get Janine to drill it and we'll see <laughs> how it goes. I'll look after Your the poor kids. wife. <laughs> oh, she won't do that. I'll do that, of course. All right. So, long and short of it is, depending on what your forte is, but also the longevity of your decking boards and, and how well you want them to fasten down and how much, you, how much skin you want to lose from your toes. That's right. So, although some of these other options may be more affordable, like the, what did you call it? The smooth shank smooth nails? Smooth shank nails, yeah. You know, yep. they are often the most affordable option compared to some of these other other options. But realistically, when our decks are outside in our country and they are weathered as much as they are in Australia, you really need to finish it well. I think you summed it up that our, all of the work underneath really is pointless if our decking boards aren't finished well. So That's choose right. your decking board fixings really carefully. That's right. There's other things on the market now too. There's ones that are actual secret fixings as well. They go in through the side of the decking board and then come down into the joist that way. So from like the top- Like when you secret nail your floor. Like secret nailing your floor, but no. then now for, now for decks. So you can get those, they come with a do special tool. Do you need tool. a special yeah, tool Yeah, it's to... a special okay. tool to do it. Um, but they look amazing because you don't see any fixings. That means no skin off your toes. No skin off your can toes. Can they be bought at most mainstream places? I think so, yeah, yeah. There's some of the larger, obviously some of the larger warehouses sell them as well so um but that's worth investigating and is it difficult to do no i think they're actually quite good to use All right so i think you need to road test that yeah. against our self-drilling self -drilling, yeah, screws we might have to do a little uh, a little bit of uh, a bit of road testing home maintenance all right. All right, guys, get to it. Decks are a massive part of our world. Yeah, fantastic, especially here in Australia. Greatly increase your living space and livability of your home. So get amongst it. Get a deck. Today, we are going to be talking about how to keep your energy up realistically using plants with the amazing Tammy Guest from TammyGuest.com. See you guys. Nice to see you too. Nice to have you here. So Tammy, being a naturopath, is obviously an epic fan of plants. Plants, nature, all of the above, yes. Goes without saying, right? Yeah. Okay. So I don't want everyone thinking that means you need to become all hippie and only eat salads. No, there's no, it's not all about rabbit food. <laughs> no, rabbit food and straw <laughs> and stuff. It's actually about how across your innovation, you can do some little things involving plants in ways you may never have thought about to keep your energy up, keep your productivity up, keep your enjoyment factor up, and keep your renovation running smoother, on time, and in a much, you know, in a much more fun way, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. So when we talk about plants, there's so many different ways we can get plants in our life, right? Yeah. So what's the one, the most obvious one that everyone thinks about? Well, the most obvious one is nourishing yourself with plants. So Without put rabbit food. Into your mouth. <laughs> So when you're choosing uh, the food that you're having on site, the, um, the little quick snacks that you're having, as long as they have a plant in them. So give me some examples. For a, a hard nut, non-fruit eater, yeah. what can I do? So it's morning tea and it's afternoon tea. I get on a salad, I could put some lettuce on there, on a sandwich, mm -hmm. totally get that. Yeah. Morning tea and afternoon tea, other than fruit, what could I do? So we've got fruit, we've got um, vegetables, vegetable sticks, we've got hummus, we've got all those amazing different types oh. of dips that are available. We've also got muesli bars or anything made of the, um, the really nourishing fibrous kind of foods. We've also got... Um, so who would have thought? I was sitting here thinking you're going to tell me only to eat a carrot. <laughs> I'm like... 
So <laughs> again, can... rabbit food. It's not about the rabbit food. The rabbit it's keeps coming about, up. It's about taking out the chocolate bar because obviously there isn't any plants in a chocolate bar, but uh, replacing it with something that actually has grown from the ground, actually has energy and putting the energy into your body. So the swaps could be as simple as um, moving it to a plant-based muesli bar, moving it to a, um, a bliss ball, one of those wonderful yeah. yummy protein yeah, balls. Yeah. And you've had some, some amazing ones. Uh, I, I have Bit actually. Bit of cacao action. Yeah. And, and they're, yeah. they're just like eating chocolate. Chocolate ball, yes. yes. Uh, and then we've got the, the hummus, the dips, the, all of okay. those different varieties as well. And even when you're considering having your breakfast, if you're going to eat brown breakfast, brown lunch, and then brown dinner, you're going to feel a bit bland. Browned. You're going to feel a bit beige, aren't you? Yes, a bit beige. You know. <laughs> we don't do beige. <laughs> um, so effectively, I guess I'm automatically thinking, how can I do this quickly? How can I do this without spending you know, my entire night before prepping all this food to have plants? A lot of those things that you just talked about, I could actually buy from a shop in a packet because yep. you know I love things in jars or packets. Yep. The other thing is uh, some of it you could batch and freeze, right? You could make a big thing of hummus and dish out and then take to site. Yep. Uh, can you put that in the freezer? Yeah, totally. Winning. And bliss balls you can totally put in the freezer. Bliss balls are the, like my go-to. Bliss balls are fantastic. So are uh, um, any, any nourishing kind of uh, muffin. They can be chucked in and you can easily quite quickly what get them What equates well. to nourishing? <laughs> Anything chip? with a plant. You can okay. put your chocolate chips in there. This is the thing. You don't have to go without your chocolate. Okay. It's just you've got to add plants to it. That's where the actual energy is coming from and not from the sugar that you think you are getting it from. Okay, so that's the most obvious one where we could get our energy from. Now, you know, the next one for me with plants is close to my heart because it's very much part of space medicine, which is surrounding ourselves in plants. As Tammy has taught us so many times before, the reason they're so amazing is they're pumping oxygen into our environment so we can breathe and revive and refresh. There's a reason people get oxygen when they're unwell in hospital. Absolutely. And so we can actually, by surrounding ourselves in plants, and some people are probably going, how on a reno site can I do that, Naomi? How is that going to energize myself? It can be as simple as deciding to take your lunch outside rather, in, rather than in the little crew room that you've set up for yourself on site. Yeah. Taking your lunch, um, and it might only be a 15-minute break, but yeah. laying under a tree with your feet up it while you suck on a smoothie for 15 minutes is going to, like, smash out your entire afternoon for you, right? Yeah, absolutely. And there's a whole bunch of new research around grounding and around foresting. And so all foresting. you have to do is put your feet on the grass. Yep, take those big boots off and stick them on the grass. No need for <laughs> hard cats. Stop. Still no, not on, not on the poor grass. No. Okay. <laughs> so that's another great way that you can actually energise because it's not only about, some people might go, well, it's just about the oxygen. I'm not sniffing the leaves, Naomi. It's not only about that. It's about so much more. When you're in a space that's providing you with, with um, nutrients on a cellular level, but also on a psychological level, like there's so much science behind it. Um, you can catch some of my other videos on space medicine because we'll be here for days if we start talking about it but take it from us so if we add plants which yep. can come in a packet just for the record totally. into your food and if you include plants into your break times even if the crew room that you set up for yourself to have a break in even if it's under a tree in the backyard or if it's too hot or too cold outside even if it's in a room that has a view of trees yeah that can go a real long way as well yeah and you and I are both lovers of good statistics and good data yeah and um, there are some amazing uh, research when it comes to the way that your body acts with cortisol now cortisol is a stress hormone and it goes up and up and up the more conversations you have to have with the tradie the closer that time frame hits and, and the bigger your and budget, the bigger gets, your and the budget gets. gets and it and we have this cap for cortisol and and when it what just, happens when it blows yeah, we get actually, we get really, really fatigued and we can't actually get up to do the job that we want to do. So we don't want it to blow, obviously, but it gets higher and higher and higher. Getting in an environment that has plants in it for just 20 minutes, 20 minutes, brings that down and gives you enough go-go juice for the next 21 hours. So, so that could actually be a really good band-aid so to speak so if you're feeling like yeah you're trying to do something and it's not working you're trying to hang a door you're trying to tile a skirt you're trying to have a difficult conversation with a tradie about an invoice you're trying to negotiate with the neighbors over the side vents if you're literally feeling like I'm going to need something then that's maybe you could even use it as a reactive medicine yep. where you go I actually need to take myself away 
I need to take myself away. And I don't just need to breathe, you know, but breathing is good. I also need to do some foresting. <laughs> foresting or grounding. <laughs> grounding. Let's stick with grounding. Connecting with plants. Connecting yeah. with plants, surrounding ourselves with plants and actually putting some plants in. Yeah. Letting them do their job, I guess, that they're always put here to do. And then knowing that you've brought it down enough that you've got some space now for the next couple of days. Before you go it. back in yeah. and approach yeah. Yeah. And, and, and see what happens. So that's great. So not only can it be used as preventative and maintenance, it can actually be used as like a rescue remedy yep. of sorts. Yeah, love it. There you go. Who would have thought? Plants, <laughs> rescue remedy, maintenance and everything else for our energy levels, our stress levels and maintaining an amazing environment when we're renovating. Thanks so much, Temi. There's so much we can learn from you about plants and I'm sure you'll be back with plenty more. Absolutely. Perfect. See you guys later. Hi guys, it's Naomi Finlay here, your rapid renovation expert. Have you chosen the perfect color palette for your home, but you're now wondering how you can translate all of this into each individual room without just copying and pasting from one to the next? Do you have a game plan for each room? Or are you struggling to come up with ways to create a style that translates into each and every space? Well, fear not, because today I'm gonna to share with you the three ways you can make sure that every single room and space gets the exact attention that it deserves. Now, of course, the renovating side of things is the most important part of your property. After all, you went into this to renovate to create wealth, right? You didn't spend all of that time and effort to skip straight to the decorating part. So obviously your renovation needs to be up to scratch too. But once they are, every single element in your home staging should be perfect as well. And that way you can maximise your return on investment once you finally sell or have your property leased. Now, part of this is to make sure that you keep it simple and positioning your furniture to make the best use in each and every space is one of the ways you can do that. And while furniture and candles and cushions and wall art, it's all so important, it's such an important part of transforming your house into a beautiful home, there are three other things that you need to consider to help it reach its peak. That's because these items aren't always translatable from space to space. You can't always throw a cushion in and viola, the space is transformed, especially in a room like a bathroom. Now these three must-haves will ensure that your property blows out of the water any competition that it may have. And not only that, it'll reach potential buyers and help them see it as an amazing, stylish, practical space that they'll become emotionally attached to, which means greater profits for you. If you've decided to go solo on your home staging route, I have a super handy styling and finishing list in my rapid renovation formula that'll help you with this. Now, what are these three essential elements to add to each and every room? Number one is contrast. It is number one on the list. Whatever style you choose to go with, with your property, contrast is a must have element in each and every space. Now, what do I mean by contrast? I hear you asking. I'm not talking about contrasting colors here, although that is one of the ways you can create contrast. You may have already chosen your color scheme and I'm not about to talk you out of it. Contrast is about opposites in light and dark or hard and soft even. So when you're staging your property, it can be easy to go with the safe option and avoid any form of contrast. Staying neutral is a good way to appeal to different buyers, but it can also mean that your property falls short of going that extra level. It loses that oomph that you're after. So contrast can be a fantastic way of doing this, of getting that oomph, of drawing attention to particular features in a room and making sure that in each and every room it stands out on its own. You don't want buyers walking from room to room thinking they all look the same because they don't. So show them what's unique about each and every room by using contrast. 
Make each room stand out with contrasting additions such as a fluffy Mongolian lamb wool cushion or a leather couch in the living room or a round vanity mirror above a square basin or soft fabrics against hard wooden tables in the dining room. These are all the different kinds of things that you can do to help add depth and also take each and every room to the next level. Number two is layers. The second element is layers. Just like contrast, layers in particular can create real interest and texture and depth. Using layers can increase a potential buyer's feeling of comfort when they enter a space. And layers aren't limited to, you know, a throw on a bed or a throw on a couch. Any decor item can be used to help create those essential layers. Rich features, things, top of or in front of other things. A vignette even in an entryway is a perfect example of achieving this. What's a vignette? I hear heaps of people say. It's a small decorative arrangement that you can put on top of a flat surface, usually like a coffee table, a hall table or a console. You could even lean framed artwork against one another, stacking a couple of books in front of it, place a scented candle on top, a table lamp next to it, a little vase of flowers, and even maybe a little finger figurine. Just make sure you're creating these and you're adding elements that complement one another, not just plonking things on a table, because there's a really fine line between a beautifully layered vignette and a table full of clutter. A more obvious example of this is using cushions, throws and different sets of sheets to make the bed in a bedroom look warm and fluffy. But they don't all have to be the sheets and pillows and covers that match. You, you can mix these up, match and create interesting effects by adding unique elements to each bedroom. Now number three is life. The last element to consider is life. Now, I don't mean that you should be leaving a half-eaten sandwich out on the kitchen bench or sticking a family portrait in the hallway to show that someone lives there. There's a big difference between personality and personal items. Now, the former will create more appeal and help you connect with the buyers that later might deter them, really. So, what am I talking about? It's one of the most elusive elements when it comes to a staged home. It's about breathing some personality into each space. These are the little finishing touches that will give your property something that most properties are absolutely missing. That large woven basket that you picked up on your last trip to Fiji can be a great way to add some personality to your bathroom. A vase of fresh foliage on the kitchen bench or some life and living plants, but you know, not the same variety throughout the whole house, in the bedrooms will make the space feel more alive and have that added bonus of connecting each of your spaces with nature. When considering how to style your home, you can achieve some mind-blowing results if you focus on using these three must-haves in every single space. Okay, guys, we have here with us at the Renault Show tonight, Mark Kentwell from PRD Nationwide Newcastle and Lake Macquarie. So Mark is a real estate agent and in his time, he has seen his fair share of properties, I dare say. Do you have a figure actually? Of how many I've sold or seen? Oh, sold. Oh, it's, it's in the thousands that we've sold, but as far seen as what we've seen, be... like, yeah, tens of thousands. That's a random question. But anyway, <laughs> so the reason I ask that is tonight I want to talk to Mark about swimming pools. So outside living is quintessential to who we are as Aussies, right? Big part of the Australian lifestyle. It's a huge part of the Australian lifestyle. However, not everyone loves a pool and I'm constantly asked and people know how I feel about it. People know that I'm not a massive fan of buying a renovator with a pool. I'm not a massive fan of flipping or investing in a house with a pool. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry everyone that has a pool and that is just my personal preference. So given you have seen multiple, multiple, multiple thousands of houses and sold thousands of houses, I wanted your take on do swimming pools add value? Yeah, so it, uh, what we find with pools is the rule of thirds. Okay. okay? I'm going to go into what the three things are. I wonder which are. third I am. I can tell you straight away. Okay. I think they can too. So a third of people won't go without one. 
So that okay. if the home doesn't have one, it must be able to have one. So it's a deal breaker. It's a deal breaker if you can't put one in the backyard or if it doesn't come with one. Okay. Now that's just one third of people. Not me. And, and that will definitely depend on the areas you're into. I'll go yep. into that in a minute. Second thing is they'll happily have one, but they're not paying more for it. Okay, so they'll suck it up if there's one there. Yeah. But they don't, they're not going to pay an extra 50. Yeah, and it can't okay. compromise the overall property dramatically for those people either. So there can't be no yard left. Exactly. Okay. And I, I've, got to, I've got to talk about that when you think about putting one in. I will in a second. The third will not have one, which was you. That's me. Yeah. And you know what? I'll have one if it comes with a pool boy. Yeah, there to you clean go. it and take care of it and stuff in my own home, but I wouldn't buy it in a renovator. Yeah, so and that's where it comes into, are you renovating to stay? Are you renovating to sell? Uh, look, I've got clients that build prestige homes near the beach in a suburb called Merriweather, yeah. and they, they buy blocks, and they're small blocks, but they've got a really top, uh, unique type of architecture where they build a three-story home. Yep. It's a very beautiful build. It's high-end. It's tailored to a couple of different um, yep. demographics. One of those demographics is the family with young kids. Okay. And they're not at the age where they can just walk to the beach on their own. Yes. They like to be able to supervise them playing in, them the, in pool, the pool. But it's still got to have that patch of grass next to it, even if grass. that patch is small. Ah, oh, so this could start a debate. Yes. As Aussies, do we like the patch of grass more than we like the pool? I think my preference is to have both. Okay. And it's got to have enough. I'm not saying I need to have a pool in the property. So if it's going to have a pool, it still needs to have the grass. Okay. So a pool with no grass, no win. Well, you're just cutting out a target market. And one of those target yeah. markets is the, the family that's got, say, two, three kids. So like tackling each other in the backyard, bowling cricket balls, playing netball, whatever it is they do. And the other quintessential part about Aussie life, which is pets. Absolutely. So, you yeah. know, dogs been able to do a little bit of their business on that, on that real grass. Now, that can be replaced with the really good artificial grass Only if it's done tastefully. Only if it's the good stuff, yeah, though. Yeah, because the, the poor stuff is horrible. The poor stuff, yeah, and the poor stuff does not do well with pet mess. No, no. So, I'm going to say a bit of real grass and the pool is okay. Okay. Um, but then there's areas where the pool just makes no sense. Like if the climate doesn't suit being in the pool more than say one to two months of the year, okay. you're going to have to go with some elaborate pool house to get the enclosure and the heat right. Yes. You're going to spend a lot of money on heating. Yes. And if the solar is not really getting a lot of sun, then it's not going to work either. So these so are things that are going to be taken rules for account. around the country, realistically. Definitely. And remembering, I think the biggest thing I took from this is obviously not everyone's like me, anti-pool, but that I think the bottom line is that it doesn't always add value to the property. I, I would say it's fair that a lot of pool jobs that have been done are upside down as far as the, the, the cost versus the return they're getting. Okay. So there's, there's options to put in like a $20,000 plunge pool, which yes. still gets the pool. But, and the surrounds of it are like five to 10,000 with a fully yeah. compliant fence. And yeah. they look good and you've still got the grass. Or you could spend 120,000. Easy. And it's on a custom job. It's, and it's tiled, beautiful. tiled with mosaics and it's got water fountains that eventually break and they cost money. <laughs> I wonder how Mark feels about water fountains. Yeah, they break <laughs> and they leave stains everywhere. Uh, and that pool there, like if you're renoing and you want any sort of value at the end of it, it's going to be a long time before you're getting that value back. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, there you go, guys. Pools are amazing. I'm absolutely not dishing pools. I'd have one in my own house at the drop of a hat with my family if I had someone to maintain it for me. Are you offering? Uh, no. <laughs> no. I don't have a moustache. <laughs> I love it. All right, guys. I hope you get some value out of whether you're going to be putting a pool into your house during your renovation or whether you're going to be buying a reno with a pool from this. So thanks again, Mark. I love having you here. My pleasure. Cuckoo. Cuckoo. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> That's for a blooper reel. Bimbo. <laughs> Oops, can't show bra. Get rid of those earrings. <laughs> Bloody bossy videographer. Passenger bins. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Gotta get the frock off. Okay. Oh, I do jeans much better than I. Perfect! Woohoo! Get amongst it, get a deck. Woohoo! Awesome! Hey guys. How many of you would love the chance to win $10,000 worth of cash and prizes to put towards your renovation? Well, you know what? 
I have just launched my Rapid Renovate renovation app and I want to celebrate. And to celebrate, I am doing just that. I'm giving you the opportunity to win over $10,000 in cash and prizes to put towards your next renovation. So click the link below to find out how you can enter. Good luck. Next time on The Reno Show, Rowan's helping us out with all our doors and what to do if yours is the wrong size. Beaumont Tiles are here to show you how to tile a splashback DIY style and leading property analyst John Linderman is back to share his insider tips for what on the ground research you need to do before you buy your next property. I'll be giving you the three ways to manage your budget during your renovation and cooking sensation Jody Blight is here to show us some easy recipes to cook during your home makeover. Remember to like and subscribe to our channel to receive weekly renovation and lifestyle inspiration. If you have a question about today's show, leave a comment below and we'll be sure to get straight back to you. Hey guys, have you heard about the amazing new renovation app? It is the Rapid Renomate app for your phone, for iPhones and Androids. And it has just taken renovation to a new level of ease. It can track everything from your timelines to your budget, to your paint colors, your supplies, and your tradies. It has truly transformed, streamlined, and made the renovation process so much easier. If you'd love to get your free app right now, click the link below and download it immediately to your iOS or your Android device. Happy renovating.